What's up, everybody? I'm Aslan Hajavandi, joined by managing editor of Warchant.com, the ultimate Semmel sports source, Irish show fellow, as well as senior lead writer, Corey S. Clark. We do ask you to kindly subscribe to our website as well as this YouTube page that you're watching and hit the thumbs up to show some appreciation for the uh, witty barbs that will be coming from Corey and the information that will be coming from Ira. So after a two-year drought, Florida State back in the postseason, guys, first time they'll be in the postseason in the state of Florida, I think in six years since that Orange Bowl. The season will wrap up, Ira. We'll start with you because it's going to be part of the podcast, Wake Up War Channel with Corey and myself. Uh, the 2022 season will end where the 2023 season will pick up. That is in Orlando in the Cheez-It Bowl against Oklahoma. Your thoughts on what this means for Florida State and wrapping up a, a pretty solid 2022. Yeah, I mean, I think as a fan, from a fan's perspective, I think it's about as good as you could have hoped for. I know there were a lot of people at FSU, uh, especially in, in the higher up levels, who were hoping maybe even Tampa for that uh, ReliaQuest uh, game. And uh, there was a chance that could have worked out. Uh, but I think Orlando is a good spot. I mean, the one downside, I guess, for Orlando is the fact that you do open the 2023 season against LSU in that same stadium. Um, so you end one season there, you start the next season there. But you know, all things considered, again, you know, it's in the state of Florida. That was one of the big things people wanted. It's a marquee matchup. It's a chance to play a, a big brand name team like Oklahoma in a year where they look very beatable. So uh, so I think from all those standpoints, it, it, it works out well. Also, I think that's a that's a little bit overblown, right? Like, do you think there's going to be people that won't go to this game because they're going eight months later or vice versa? Like, well, I was going to go watch the LSU game, but I watched them play Oklahoma. So now I'm not. I, I think the 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 best case scenario was probably Jacksonville, just because he hadn't been there in so long, and it's not Orlando. But man, it's a really good thing for this fan base to be in the center of the state, where you know you're going to have a lot of fans that want to come celebrate this team. All right, we get to paint the town red. Uh, two blue bloods going into Orlando. There, Ira. Uh, this will be the eighth meeting between the two teams. First ever time they played, Florida State took them down in Jacksonville in the Gator Bowl back in 65. We all remember that one fondly, 36 and 19 since then. Uh, it's been all Sooners. Um, but just in terms of, I guess, being back here in the state of Florida for this kind of game, not going out to the Holiday Bowl, how big of a, a boon is that for this staff, you think, Ira, to, to be in the state of Florida for the entire month? They can focus on all their recruiting efforts and game prep and not have to worry about going cross country to play in a bowl game. Yeah, I, th I definitely think that's a big benefit. You know, sometimes if you get a bowl game in Atlanta or, a, or in Miami or in, you know, another area where you want to do some recruiting, it can kind of work out pretty well. Uh, but I don't know that California is going to be a huge emphasis of what Florida State does in recruiting. Uh, and then, like you said, most of the recruiting they're going to do is in the southeast. So you'd be going back and forth. So, yeah, I think it works out for every reason. Um, all, you know, now you may be able to have some guys at those practices. Uh, you might have high school coaches. Mike Norvell is a big uh, proponent of getting high school coaches to his practices. And I think bowl games are a perfect opportunity to do that. So, yeah, for a lot of reasons. I, I just think it, it it works out really well in the, for a lot of different reasons. Corey, I think like, you know, momentum, I think, is overrated when you talk about bowl performance and what it means for, for the next season coming up. But just to focus on this season, if, if Florida State's able to close it out, 10 wins, against an Oklahoma team. I mean, that brand, obviously not to their sort of standards here of late, but uh, what would it mean in terms of putting a bow on this 2022 season for you, do you think? Yeah, I think that's what matters most. I don't know about kickstarting the, the 2023 season. By the way, interestingly, isn't LSU in the other cheese at bowl mm -hmm. against Purdue? So they start, they finish their season where their season's going to start next year too. So each team's getting a look at a, at, at Orlando uh, eight or nine months early. And, and that will be a much bigger game than these these bowl games. But yeah, I just think it would be a, a really cool finish for the, for this team to finish with 10 wins. I, I think that's all that really matters. It'd be a cool, it's a feather in the cap, much like I'd, I'd equate it to 2010. You know, that, that was a nice season for Jimbo in his debut season. It just felt so good to finish with that 10 wins, beat a SEC team. This time, if you win, you're beating a blue blood. I know it's not the Oklahoma of even, I don't know, last year, two years ago, they're, they're struggling and they have, they are terrible on defense. Um, but man, it, it would just be a really nice finish to, to start 4-0, three-game losing streak, then, then rip off six straight wins to end the season and probably finish top 10 in the country. That is that, a great third year for Mike Norvell. And I think that's why, to Corey's question earlier about the attendance, that's why I don't think it's going to be a big impact because I think this game is very much different from that next game. You know, if this was in the middle of five straight bowl appearances – yeah. I, you know, I could see that being a factor, but this is the first time in a few years Florida State's been to a bowl game. It's the uh, people fell in love with this football team, this particular team, and what this team has done this season. 
It would be a chance to win a 10th game. So, man, of course, people are going to go on to go to that game. And then on the other side, starting next season against LSU, that's going to be a big-time game. That may be a top-10 matchup. We don't know, uh, based on who all returns from both schools and who they get in the portal. And so that's, you know, I think on their own, they both are going to be very highly anticipated, highly attended games. So I, I agree. I don't think it's going to be a big loss either way. It also are bowl games that are played in Shreveport and El Paso. Are they really bowl games? Come on, gang. I know y'all had to, y'all went to, or I, or you went to both of them. I just was, I just got to enjoy Shreveport. But the point being, nobody was excited about those games. No, the, the, the fan base, I mean, I, there were a, a couple thousand maybe about those games, like diehard Florida State fans. This is, this is the first bowl game that's felt like a Florida State bowl game. Matchup wise, season wise, location wise, in a in a good long while. Well, since 2016, in six years. Ira, uh, this tweet here from the Cheez It Bowl. I mean, what, what does it mean for Florida State? I guess to, to ultimately go to this bowl game because, uh, you know, once a New Year's Six bowls pick theirs, uh, you know, get their team slotted. Uh, this Cheez It Bowl, they had the first dibs on the ACC. They picked Florida State. I guess that just maybe underscores how uh, solid this brand still is, or maybe is, is back uh, in terms of relevancy. I mean, there's no doubt. I think every bowl in Florida wanted Florida State. The Orange Bowl would have loved to have had Florida State. I think the Orange Bowl people were not happy that Clemson uh, lost last week against South Carolina because that meant they were likely going to the Orange Bowl, which they are, and they're going to play Tennessee. And it's it's kind of a good game, and it helps them that Clemson looked good on Championship Weekend. But Clemson faded down the stretch, and their fans probably aren't all that fired up to go to a bowl game after being in all these playoffs. So uh, Flor- the Orange Bowl would have loved to have Fl- Florida State. The Gator Bowl would have loved to have had Florida State. Uh, the cheese it Bowl, and, and also I think ReliQuest. I think the Tampa Bowl would have liked them. They just couldn't do it because of the way things worked out. So, yeah, Florida State, I think, would have been the top choice for any of these bowls in the state of Florida. It just worked out where cheese it kind of got their their pick. What happened two years after we played uh, the last bowl game in Orlando, Corey? Um, I don't know. Are you quizzing? Oh, they won a national championship. That's right. They beat Notre Dame, came back from, I think, a 14-0 deficit. At halftime, or fourteen to three, and beat them. They they played Wisconsin there a few years before that, so they have a history in Orlando with bowls. Um, and they and you know again, I just I, I'm really excited about that. It's cool. I, look, no offense to Texas Tech, but when that name was being rumored about as being maybe the other team, I'm like, hey, all right. But Oklahoma just adds some juice. Now I don't know how excited their fans will be to come watch this team on December 29th, but it does get them out of Oklahoma for the holidays. <laughs> so that, and I, that's more of a weather dig than the state dig. I mean, you just get you, you're going to have nice weather and it's Orlando. It's a destination city. So um, that, that maybe it'll be a, a real bowl atmosphere with 50, 50, but I would think you would imagine right Ira, like 75, 25, 80, 20 uh, Florida state fans. It might be hard to differentiate because the colors are so similar, but I really think Florida state's going to have, I don't know, 40,000, 50,000 people at this game? Yeah, I would think it'll be heavily favored to Florida State. Now, although uh, if Dylan Gabriel plays for, more, for Oklahoma, mm, he's got the uh, right. the Orlando ends, might be fired up for their former guy. Uh, there's a lot of interesting subplots from that standpoint. I mean, like we said, this is an imminently winnable game. This is a 6-6 six and six Oklahoma team. Like you said, it's really bad on defense. But when Dylan Gabriel's, Gabriel's played, their offense has done well. Like that, yeah. the, the game that stands out is that 49 nothing to Texas, but he didn't play. Um, and the, you know, in the games he played, I mean, they, they, they lost a lot of those good games to Kansas state and TCU and Texas tech, but they were in them. So I don't know that this is going to be, I think some people are thinking, Oh, this is a great chance for Florida state to cruise to 10 wins, but it's going to be a good game. Yeah. Big, uh, big 12 showing themselves uh, to be a really capable conference uh, for our listeners. that are listening to the podcast, uh, Oklahoma 18th in yards on offense. They are a 35th in points scored. But defensively, they are 120th in yards allowed, averaging uh, allowing over 450 yards per game and allowing nearly 30 points per game as well. So maybe the over, but that's not our program uh, when it comes to that sort of stuff. Ira, there's no offseason really ever when it comes to covering college football, but especially now with Florida State in a bowl game and with this transfer portal window opening up on Monday, December 5th. What's going to be cooking over at Warchant.com this week, do you uh, assume our managing editor, our, our fearless leader? I mean, yeah, man, that's going to be the the big focus early in the week. Later in the week, they are supposed to, we believe they're going to have some bowl practices uh, to kind of get that process going. And then uh, we're not, we don't have the full bowl practice schedule yet, but I do think they may practice some later in the week. Uh, but early in the week, yeah, the, the portal opens uh, for business for, for FBS players. It's already been open for 
grad transfers and FCS and Division II players. And Florida State's already been recruiting some of those guys, and we have stuff up on the website about that process. And Mike, Nor- Mike uh, not Mike Norvell, Michael Langston mm. has had some updates. It would be cool if Mike Norvell contributed as well. Just once I mean, a week. Just, just once a week, send us an update on who he's looking at, who's who's hot, who's not in the portal. Not daily. Right. It doesn't even have to be video. Much. He's got other right. stuff to do. Um, but yeah, Michael Langston's already got some of that up on the site, but yeah, it's going to open for business for sure uh, on Monday. And, uh, we've been taking a look at some of the positions, which positions might be most likely to need portal acquisitions. Um, and then as those players, you know, enter it, uh, you know, we'll certainly have breakdowns of that. And then the process of the, their recruitment. And a lot of it goes a lot quicker as we all know than it used to back in the old days. I think like Jermaine Johnson and some of those guys, it's like they went in the portal and within hours, it seemed like. They were committing to Florida State. So it all moves quickly, so people should check out warchant.com to, to stay in tune with all the coverage. And related to the bowl, don't you think, like Oklahoma has some players. Uh, they had, I think, I looked it up, they had four or five guys on the first or second team that are all draftable. Now, I don't know what kind of draft prospects they are, but again, that's that's it's the portal season, but it's also skipping the bowl season. Um, so, you, you know, keep in mind when you're, when you're thinking about this matchup, Florida State we think is going to have everybody. Uh, available at least that's what they're saying now we'll see as we get closer to the game but uh Oklahoma you don't know they might have three or four guys skip it like you even said if D- Dylan Gabriel plays I don't know what kind of NFL prospect he is I would assume he would play but uh that's something to watch out for too is just which of these which of these teams suffers bowl skippage yeah and I, and I would think you know for Florida State I mean you know we've, we're getting every indication that Jordan Travis is Aslan's got the tweet up there uh, the you know it's everyone's expecting Jordan Travis to come back next year, so that that's the case. Then obviously he'd be playing in the bowl. You know it sounds promising for some of these other guys, Jamie Robinson, and uh, and, and said he's definitely playing. Jer- uh, Jared Verse said he's more than likely playing. It sounds like he's probably going to play. And then you know the the guys that I would be a bl- little bit more leery of uh, certainly is like Fabian Lovett. I mean I think there's a very good chance he's going to go pro, and if he does, he's a guy we haven't heard from yet. Maybe he decides not to. But I do think this was a fun year for these guys. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to be rushing to get out where in, in a lot of years when you've been playing in a lot of bowl games, maybe that's the attitude. Yeah. Again, Florida State will play Oklahoma in the Cheez-It Bowl. That's what, December 29th, gentlemen? Mm-hmm. 5.30 p.m., right, Ira? 5.30 yeah. p.m. On, e, uh, on ESPN. Correct. That is all right. If you all more, which you certainly do, stick around here. We'll have the Sunday Smash live, 7 o'clock with Jeff Cameron and Tom Lang the Wake Up War Chant podcast as well, and then everything you need over at warchant.com. Hit the thumbs up on the way out. We certainly would appreciate it. Ira, Corey, thanks, man. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, guys. Love you.